What is up guys, I hope you're having a fantastic day and welcome back to the channel. So now I know we do a lot of tech stuff on this channel and the vast majority of that stuff involves computers and all that jazz, but something else that I'm very passionate, well, passionate I guess is just another word for nerd, uh, something else I'm very nerdy with is video and photo gear. So in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at one of my favorite cameras, the Sony A6500. So I purchased this camera back in 2018 and it's been in my camera bag and being used as one of my workhorse cameras ever since. Now with the recent release of the new Sony a6600, prices for this amazing camera have seriously dropped, making it even more compelling of a choice for photographers and videographers on a limited budget. So let's go ahead and roll our intro and get right into the good and the not so great parts of this little camera. All right, so just so you guys are aware, for this video, I'm gonna be comparing the A6500 to its new successor, the A6600. I feel like this is the obvious thing to do. Uh, the reason for this is the two cameras are nearly identical, but with some key differences, obviously, making the new A6600 400 US dollars more expensive at the time of filming this video. Uh, Pretty crazy. Uh, I really want to figure out if the A6600 is worth buying, you know, paying that extra $400 over the A6500 in the year 2020, since the price for the A6500 has finally dropped significantly. Now let's start with some of the awesome features of this A6500 right here that it has going for it, and it actually shares with the more expensive A6600. These features include a 24.2 megapixel Exmor CMOS APS-C sensor, giving both cameras spectacular image quality, recording 4K up to 30p, honestly you should record it in 24p, just saying, uh, at 100 megabits per second in that XVACS uh, codec. And according to many other reviews that I've read and looked at, there's honestly no difference between the two. So no matter if you go with the A6500 or this new 6600, uh, you're gonna be getting some awesome video, assuming that you're obviously shooting at your right settings. So on the photo side of things, this thing is able to shoot at 11 FPS maximum photo burst speed, which is insanely fast with this little camera. It's pretty insane to look at. Both cameras feature five axis stabilization with five stops of compensation, which is somewhat controversial seeing as pretty much all of the Sony mirrorless cameras that I've even tried especially and what I've you know seen online, they suffer from what they call the rolling shutter when you move the camera too fast. Uh, but really, this is only apparent if you're really whipping the camera back and forth pretty fast like that. So vloggers, beware if you're doing this a lot, uh, you, you might be able to see that rolling shutter quite a bit. So they both actually include a lot of different picture profiles, including S-Log2 and S-Log3. Obviously, the new A6600 has a couple more, including HDR video. This one does not. They both include a 2.36 million dot viewfinder, uh, up to 120 hertz, and a touch-to-focus rear LCD screen uh, that unfortunately does not work with the menus. Uh, you can actually just use it to uh, focus on your subject and actually refocus in different spots, which is really cool. I use that all the time. But as far as the menu system, you can't select anything with the with the touchscreen, which is really weird. Both of the cameras feature a single UHS-1 SD card slot right down here. Uh, and, you know, obviously you're not gonna see the double card slot in these smaller cameras. You're gonna see that in a more professional camera like the a7 III. And then both cameras feature a magnesium alloy body that has both dust and moisture protection on it. So now that you're aware of all the nice to haves that this camera is exactly the same as the A6600, the newer expensive camera, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at a few things that fall short with this camera that they improved with the newer A6600. So the first thing I wanna let you guys know about, and I, I could rant about this all day long, and that is the battery. So A6500 unfortunately uses the smaller FW50 battery. Let's see if we can get that focused. Yeah, see how small these batteries are? Uh, so these, when you shoot in 4K, uh, continuously, these tend to train extremely fast. Uh, and I know this for a fact because uh, when I started using this camera to record uh, events and do weddings and stuff like that, it was the most frustrating thing about this awesome little camera. 
Now, despite this setback, there are fixes for this. Uh, I won't get too much in depth on this because that's for a completely another video. But what you can actually do is there is a charging port on the side of the camera that you use to just charge the camera. And you can actually plug in a, you know, just regular USB cord and run that to an external battery. And you can attach that, you know, battery bank or whatever to the bottom of your camera, your gimbal, your cage, whatever. Uh, and then, then that'll help you seriously extend the life of your camera. The A6600, on the other hand, does not suffer from this problem because of the new FZ series battery. Uh, my A7 III uses this battery, that's why I have these. This is actually not a Sony battery, it's an aftermarket battery, but this is what it looks like. Uh, just for comparison, I can show you guys the size difference right here. So yeah, this bigger battery, it lasts so much longer. Uh, and it gives the, this the newer cameras a huge leg up on the other cameras. So I just wanted to let you guys know that because it's seriously something to be aware of if you're trying to pick up the A6500. Okay, and this one is very common for all the Sony mirrorless cameras, but the next feature that the A6500 lacks is the lack of a flip out screen that helps you actually be able to see yourself when you're vlogging, okay? So pretty much every Sony mirrorless camera lacked this until the introduction of the A6400, and now they actually implemented that with the A6600. Now being that pretty much every other camera manufacturer has some type of like flip out screen system on their cameras, uh, this has always been a slight downside of the Sony cameras. Um, to be honest, in my opinion, I've been okay without a flip out screen to be honest, because uh, I basically have been using Sony cameras since day one. Uh, I started with my Sony A6000, you can see right here. And uh, this guy also does not have a flip out screen. They tilt, but they don't flip out. Um, and I've been used to that because I started using that from the get go. Um, so I also believe that pretty much this is why when I do attach an external monitor to my cameras, like to this one or the a7 III that I'm recording on right now, I tend to look at it too much. Uh, and that's because from the, from the very beginning, I never used a screen to look at and I was never used to it. Uh, so I, it's not a big thing for me because I got used to it, but if you're huge into vlogging and you don't want to spend the extra money on an external monitor solution, kind of like this right here, uh, and attaching this to your camera or something like that, uh, that could be a deal breaker for you. So now moving on to a feature with the A6500 that has always been super reliable, and that is the autofocus system. It is very fast, and like I mentioned before, it is so good that even without a flip out screen, I trust it enough to basically just put the camera in front of my face, and I know that it's gonna focus. Like you, see, like this A7 III, like right there, I'm not even looking at it, and I know it's gonna focus because these cameras are so good at it. Uh, so now the A6600, has the newer technology that Sony put into their autofocus system that basically just makes what this camera right here has, it just makes it even better. Uh, and this is one of the key reasons that some people are buying the newer camera, other than the battery, of course, because the battery is probably the main thing because the battery life on this thing sucks. Uh, the A6600 is also the first Sony APS-C camera to feature their eye autofocus for video, which is insane because if you're a photographer and you use the eye autofocus on your regular, your Sony cameras for photography, you'll know that having that in video is pretty awesome. So uh, despite not having the newer technology though, I still think that the A6500's autofocus system really holds its own in so many run and gun situations, like being on a gimbal and uh, all things like that that it will be extremely reliable for anybody that wants to try this camera. So now I know that last one wasn't really a con, it was kind of a good one. We're gonna shift back to another annoyance with the A6500 here, and that is the limited video recording time. This plagued me when I first started using these little cameras because these camera bodies are so small, uh, there's not a lot of room to dissipate the heat, so they do they tend to heat up when you're recording 40, 4K video for an extended period of time. Uh, so. Sony fixed that and they got rid of this limitation with the new A6400 and then with the newer A6600. So if you're someone that tends to record long video productions like events or stuff like that where your camera's gonna be sitting there for like an hour, two hours, you know, whatever, uh, this is definitely something to be aware of because you will basically have to watch your camera until it hits the 30 minute mark because that is the maximum allowed of time at one, at one clip that you can record with this camera. Uh, you'll have to wait to the 30 minute mark and then basically hit your record button again, which is what I used to have to do all the time. So if you're standing by your camera the whole time, it's a minor annoyance and you can figure it out. But if you're leaving the camera running and then you have another camera, you're gonna be taking around doing something else around the event, 
this will be very annoying for you. So just keep that in mind if you're looking at getting this camera. Okay, so the last con I'm gonna talk about when I talk about the A6500 here is the lack of a headphone jack. So when you look at the side opened right here, you'll see that there's this little red circle right here and that is for a microphone, but there is no headphone jack to monitor your audio. So if you've looked at like cinema cameras or even a camera like the a7 III I have right here, you'll notice that they do have a microphone input and a headphone input and that is so videographers can monitor their audio levels, which is super important in a lot of different situations. You don't want your audio clipping or it's basically unusable. Uh, so this is key in many shooting situations and the lack of support for this definitely might be a deterrent for some serious filmmakers. Now, again, there are fixes for this and there are ways around this, like adding an external recorder, uh, like a Zoom H1, you can actually put it on the top of your camera, which also has you know, an audio out so you, and a headphone out so you can listen to your audio and monitor it. So you can do something like that or you can take something like this, like a monitor that has a headphone jack in it and monitor your audio through the HDMI. So again, it's, it's a way around it, but the fact that it doesn't have support for it right out of the camera is something that many people may be looking for and may deter people away from this camera if they're really looking for it. Okay, conclusion time. So despite the few shortcomings that this camera has, the Sony a6500 remains an extremely capable 4K mirrorless camera that can hang with the best of them. And I have no problem saying that because when I shoot with this camera and my a7 III, honestly, my 4K footage looks very, very similar, okay? It's super light, it's small, uh, and extremely versatile. Basically what you can attach to it, you can put a cage on it, you can build all sorts of different camera rigs with it. Uh, and being that the price has now dropped, making it just $800 right now. Guys, I paid $1,200 for this two years ago, okay? Uh, $800 at the time of filming. It may even drop even more. Uh, this to me makes this a very compelling argument to buy this camera uh, for someone who's looking to invest in their new filmmaking setup. Um, basically by saving that money, you're, you're allowing yourself to be able to purchase like your quality first lens basically, not have to buy just a kit lens. You're able to buy something like back here, like this guy right here the 18 to 105 f4g lens which is awesome for uh, putting on a gimbal and doing work like that uh, something like the sigma right here 16 mil f1.4 which is an amazing aps-c lens uh, or you know what if you're on an extremely limited budget maybe even just a nifty 50 like this that's really really cheap and uh, maybe even another lens basically that money you're gonna save is gonna really help you in the long run and even after buying something like that, your total may still be cheaper than the new A6600 is because that camera comes in at 1200, maybe even more right now. So, and that is just for the body, no lens included. So if you're on a limited budget and you're trying to get your new kit going, the $800 Sony A6500 right here may be exactly what you're looking for to get your filmmaking career started. So that's gonna be it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed this little rundown of this camera. I mean, I really just wanted to bring this to you guys because I saw that it's a very compelling argument now to get this camera versus the newer one. Uh, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure you guys smash that like button. I really appreciate you guys doing that. Um, and if you have any questions, comments or concerns about anything I said about this camera or if you don't know about any of these things and you have a question, please leave in the comments below. I have no problem answering your questions and I love to see that stuff. And if you really enjoy my content and you wanna see more, please consider getting subscribed and smashing that notification button. That way you can be the first to know when I start a new stream or post a new video. I really am glad you guys decided to come hang out with me today and I'll see you in the next one. Later.